Hi, Jaina. So, tell us a little bit about what led to the Chennai water crisis. See, Chennai is a beautiful city in the sense uh, we have a lot of water resources. Chennai has three major rivers. You know, we have Kosas Talayar in the north of Chennai. We have Kuvam in the middle of Chennai. And then we have Adayar River in the south of Chennai. And then you have Buckingham Canal cutting across all these three rivers. And then you have around 3,600 water bodies like lakes and you know all these areas, Kulam Kutais that we call. So lakes, ponds and so on. Uh, in Chennai, Kanjiburam and Tiruvallu. So we are a water a rich resource I would say city. But unfortunately what has happened is that uh, over the last 30 years or so, the way we have managed these water bodies has led to where we are right now. So for example, uh, you know, uh, with respect to the rain, you know, whether we are rain deficient or rain surplus, if you look at the data, it is very, very clear that Chennai receives much more rainfall than what Tamil Nadu receives on the average. Uh, and at some instances, even uh, the nation what it receives on the average. Mm -hmm. So the last four years alone, Chennai's average is 1,300 uh, millimeter, which is both both more than the national average and also more than the Tamil Nadu average. Mm -hmm. So therefore, uh, it's not the question of deficient rainfall. Mm -hmm. The question is about you know when you have rainfall, what happens to the water that comes in? You know there are two levels of water harvesting that needs to happen. One at the surface level, then, you know, you hold water at the surface level and one at the groundwater level. You recharge your groundwater as much as possible. Now our water bodies have shrunk almost 60 to 70 percent, most of the water bodies in the city because of very poor urban planning. Uh, there is a lot of encroachments that are there because of that. To, you know, the sewage of the city almost 100 crore liters every day, just 1000 million liters a day is let into our water bodies without any kind of treatment. Number three, you know, a lot of garbage is dumped directly on the water body. You know, Pallikarna is a very eco-sensitive hot spot, I would say that it's a marshland. It's, it's very rarest of the rare kind of marshlands that you will see. But today it's being used as a dump yard where garbage of the city is being dumped. So, you know, these are issues that, uh, you know, that's the reason why we are here today. And much more importantly, you have to maintain these water bodies. You have to continuously desilt and deepen these water bodies to the original capacity, to the level where it was. See, we have this beautiful system where upstream you collect the water during the rain, then it flows from one, uh, you know, uh, lake to another lake through a water channel. You know, it keeps filling on and on and on until it reaches the sea. So by the time before it reaches the sea, the maximum amount of water is captured both in the, at the surface level in these uh, lakes and uh, channels and also groundwater is recharged. But unfortunately because of this shrinking, because of this garbage, because of the sewage, now most of this water uh, that is there at the surface level, water is mixed with sewage so it can't be used for drinking. Now, uh, since the silt has been formed, no desilting has been done, no maintenance has been done, you know, you do not have enough storage capacity. Mm -hmm. So all this has led to the kind of situation where we are. Mm -hmm. And even today, at this time of water crisis, we are not looking forward for solutions that are sustainable. You know, we are not looking forward for the solutions that are lying right before our eyes which is to manage these water bodies. Mm -hmm. you know, the government keeps talking about, again, things like desalination plants and other modes of getting water. You know, it's not about water augmentation. You know, wherever you get water, you just collect it. It's about a complete holistic approach that you need to take where you improve the entire water cycle, right from tree plantation to, you know, to make sure that there are, you get rains you make sure that you store these rainwater underground as well as at the surface level, then it reaches the sea, you know. So these are things, there is a, some amount of water that also needs to reach the sea because there is marine life. So this entire water cycle needs to be taken care of is what uh, the government needs to understand. So therefore, 
this is the reason why we are here and if we learn the lesson today at least we can save the future is what we do. Right. See, there are uh, two things that we need to do. Yes, at the individual level, every person has a responsibility in terms of making sure that they harvest the rainwater that they get in their household and so on. So that is something that every individual must definitely do. Mm -hmm. But at the community level, see, you need to look at ways of harvesting the rainwater in a major way. Because whatever we do at the individual level is a minor rainwater harvesting structure, but these lakes and ponds are the major rainwater harvesting structures, which is very, very important to take care of. Therefore, people, uh, what we are encouraging is that people at every community level needs to make sure they need to understand, uh, you know, the, the emotional connect with the water bodies around them needs to be re-established. See, in the urban setup, it's not that easy as well where we are. For example, in a city like Chennai, where the, the connection between the water body and the citizens have been lost. So therefore, they don't feel for it, they don't, now the necessity has come, now they have felt, you know, this kind of water crisis, what it could do and so on. So therefore, the establishment of connection, emotional connection with the nearby water bodies needs to be made. They need to make sure that they take ownership and responsibility for the water bodies near their area. Mm -hmm. So. You know, there are different solutions to it. One is, of course, people going and restoring it, which is things like uh, Mr. Rajendra Singh has shown how to do it. But there is also much more importantly, you need to get the government to do a lot of things because, you know, sewage mixing into the water bodies is something the government must take care of. Mm -hmm. So, therefore, what we uh, say is that every citizen needs to look at the water bodies, what are the issues that are there. So, whether the water body can be restored to its original capacity whether you make sure that sewage is not discharged into the water body. So if the sewage is not discharged into the water body, the government must make sure that they build the sewage treatment plants or localized solutions of sewage treatment to make sure uh, that the sewage is not discharged into the water body. The government needs to take care of uh, rainfall accountability is something that we feel is a very, very important thing. And every drop of rainwater that we get, the government must keep accounts of it. They must tell, tell the citizens that how much of these water that they have stored as surface water, how much is recharged underground, how much is let into the sea. So this kind of accounting is extremely important for the government as well as the citizens to realize how we manage our water. Also we have been asking the government that uh, you know citizens participation and engagement must be made mandatory mm -hmm. in the sense every scheme that involves the water bodies and the water supply and distribution, the government must make sure that there are there is a, a social audit of by the citizens on it. There is a citizen participation and engagement right from the budgeting stage all the way to the restoration of the water body. So these are important aspects that the government must focus on and uh, a holistic uh, approach of looking at this whole water cycle right from planting of trees to ensuring that they recharge, uh, restore all our water bodies to uh, you know making sure uh, that uh, a sufficient amount of water also goes into the sea. So the make, making sure that this entire water cycle takes place <laughs> is something that the government must ensure. And so citizens role is going to be monitoring the government to ensure that they do each of this in the water body near their area.